about definitely. That's awesome. Okay, there we go. I didn't Yeah, I didn't know you could do half of these things with Zoom that these guys are doing. <laughs> We're on Zoom like 50 times a day, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got Australia in here. Okay, okay. I'm trying to oh, see. Yeah. All over the world. We got Jamaica. I see Trinidad, Australia, New United Zealand, Kingdom, London, Grenada. Texas, Grenada, exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, uh, the Philippines. Are here. Am I going to be the only one with with my video on? Or y'all going to leave me out here? <laughs> 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 Look, David, that, this is what we're not doing. <laughs> oh my God, we're about to hit a thousand people. This is cool. Yup. Look out! Look how shiny David David Ted is. Really. Yeah, look, 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 it, it's just a light. You know what? Matt, Matt, <laughs> Max called me out. Matt, Max called me out. I'm I'm my I'm my new lighting, but I don't have it up here. That's all that is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Cody, it, it's um, it's definitely uh, 11, uh, 11 p.m. Um, you know, I, I, oh. I, there you go. What's up, Easton? What's going on, guys? Hey, hey. We are so small. Yeah, why are we so small, David? Oh, oh listen, I'm spotlighting the video. Just get, give me a second, man. I, 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 I know how I know how to work Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so guys what, what's up Bob L listen before before anything else you know I really do want to take the time and just say Cody and Eason um you know before I say anything and before we get to any Q&A's um you know they they had a vision for for the company if it wasn't for any of the if it wasn't for their vision if it wasn't for them kind of putting together this platform none of us would be here so you know before anything else I, I'd really like it i'd really appreciate if everyone just threw a thank you in the chat box um because you know um we we really do owe all the growth right here we we owe everything um to the vision that they had um the company that they formed and the checks that they cut <laughs> so um you know i'm incredibly thankful for for those um so you know that that being said um i want to go ahead and just kind of allow them to um to really talk before anything else about their vision for the company where it is that we're at where it is that we're going and then we'll take some q and a's because i i feel that in the process you know they're going to uh address a lot of the questions that uh people already have and um and above all you know i also want to take the time and i just want to thank uh dominique barbie uh my, my fellow legend over here for taking the time and twisting some arms to get this done um, cause I'm not a hard closer. Dominique is. So, <laughs> so thank you Dominique for, for putting this together. And, uh, with that guys, you know, I'm going to turn the call over to you and, uh, put myself on mute, stop my video and, and look at you guys and listen. All right. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you for that introduction, David and everyone in the comments has an overwhelming amount of thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. This is yeah. so cool. Dude. I'm just going through the comments and all these people are just like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, this we appreciate so you guys. Um, as far as, you know, Tradera and the vision of the company, you know, we created Tradera to give the average person the ability to master this skill set. And in my opinion, trading is one of the most valuable skill sets over anything else, I'm gonna be honest, over anything else. You know, and really where I see Tradera going personally is being the number one trading education company in the world. And we're already on par to do that. You know, we're doing a lot of things. I know <laughs> you guys, you guys don't see or hear from us a lot. We're doing so much on the back end, it's almost unbelievable. But we're just getting everything in place so that we can launch forward into the future. Because guys, like, let's be honest, what we have here is amazing. You know, the, the team leadership, all of you guys here, the back office education, it's, we've worked so hard on that for you guys and we're gonna be adding um, some new stuff too as well. I'm not gonna give any secrets away to what we're gonna be doing, but I do see this just taking over long-term because we've already got a lot of the things in place to put us in that position. It just comes to laying a few more things at the groundwork and then at that point, you know, it's, it's sky's the limit. 
Everyone's asking me about the dragon head. Should I address it? Don't address it. Don't address <laughs> it. Don't address it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, my phone's dead, so I'm having to really look in here. Man, they're just saying what's up. They're just they're just glad to be here. Hey, from my show. Hey guys, hey guys. So I know that there's supposed to be a Q and A. Um, I know there's a big thing going around um, that we don't even exist, which is uh, <laughs> something called my dragon. <laughs> so I mean, it's a little it's a little interesting to me, you know. But um, my pad. Is there anything that yeah, yeah, before. because because someone said that my dragon head was a dinosaur, so obviously I gotta address that. Right? Okay. So the reason why I've got a dragon head on my couch, so when I got it, I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't really know what to do with it when I got it at the time. So you know, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna put it over my bed, and then my girlfriend was worried that it would fall and crush her, right? So okay, pretty fair. So I thought maybe I'll put it on my fridge, but then I felt fat, so I thought maybe I'll put it in my bathroom, but then I felt weird when I went to the bathroom. So it just ended up on my couch. I got like a platform right here. So let's just it just sits here. It just sits there. I told them not to buy it. Listen, <laughs> Cody and Easton, they, the the field is not used to how silly you guys are for real. <laughs> oh God! Before, before Tradera blew up to what it is today, okay. And some of the some of the people who have been around since day one will tell you this: Tradera was a very different company. You know, there were no marketers, no IBOs. We were just a group of traders, big group of traders. Don't get me wrong, but things were a lot different. We knew every single person in the company. You know, we worked with everyone on a daily basis with the trading and we could do and say a lot more <laughs> than, than what we could do now. We actually had to go back and edit a lot of the training to take out a lot of the, um, Easter eggs. Easter eggs, yeah, let's call them that. There's still a couple in there if you look real hard, but we had to take a lot of it out, tone things down. Yeah. You know, but uh yeah, guys, it's it's been it's been wild. It's crazy to see where we are now, how many people are involved with the company, how big the company's gotten, and just really the scope of the company and where things are heading is just really amazing. Okay, so 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 I know uh, uh I'll start with kind of the big questions that um that um, you know, people have. One is, what's the vision? What what's the vision for the company? You know, next uh, six months, one year, three years, five years. You know, where 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 do you see us going? Um, yeah, where do you see us going? What what's your vision for Tradera? Because I know that's the number one question I get asked is, what is the vision of the CEOs? And then the connected question is, is this a pump and dump? Are they just looking to get the company big and then sell it? Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so <laughs> honestly, David, I feel like it's more of a, I address, I addressed the vision just earlier, uh, a second ago, but as far as, I feel like it's more of a longevity question, um, you know, in the next six months, <laughs> yeah, guys, you can't, you wouldn't even imagine the amount of things that are going on in the back end right now, and uh, we're trying to get those out as quick as possible, it's going to, it's going to streamline a lot of things, it's going to fix a lot of issues, um, that are people are having, you know, as far as uh, structure wise, it's not it's not major issues or anything like that. I mean, we are we are a concrete company um, as far as everything goes. In the next six months, we're gonna have all that ironed out. And honestly, we're I feel like we'd be <laughs> unstoppable if I'm being honest. You know, we're we're good on all aspects of the spectrum uh, right now. So I mean, what we've got going is it's gonna be amazing as far as uh, the longevity goes. We don't plan on going anywhere, guys. You know, we're in this for the long haul. I um, mean, I know there was <clears throat> there were some things going around that a lot of people were trying to stir up, like, oh, they're not going to pay their people out. And guys, let me tell you, we've paid everybody out. You know, if we were going to tuck tail and run, we would have done it already. You know what I mean? We're here to stay and we're here for you guys. And we want this platform to be the, the biggest thing that this niche has ever seen. Yeah, I mean, we're walking away next Tuesday. <laughs> you telling them they not they not ready they're not ready because you just gave like five people a heart attack man <laughs> but it, to me it's such a it's such an outlandish idea and i and here's the thing you know a lot of people have to understand too we're not we're not really from this industry you know like we don't play the mlm game 
you know, and it's, it's a, it's a circus. It really is, you know, out here. And I get that a lot of people have had um, bad experiences with other companies and other owners and other, you know, things that have come about. And it's just, it's not really what we're about at all. And, and it's hard for us to, we have to kind of put ourselves in everyone's mindset because, you know, we're not really, we, we, we haven't been through any of that. We, we don't even know like what they've been through, you know, and stuff, but it seems outlandish to us to even go there, but I understand why people, you know, do. And it's, it's one of those things where, you know, I feel like if people understood how much money, how much time we've invested to create this platform and the vision that we have and all of the things that we've been through for this company, you know, they would, they would understand better where we're coming from and understand why that is so outlandish and understand that we are here to create something long term. You know, and that's the reality. <clears throat> Comments are so awesome. So okay. Actually, I I, 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 I'm, see, I'm seeing some of the questions and I'll just deal with it. Guys, you cannot get the emails for the people that sign up or the phone numbers because that's a huge privacy issue. Um, so, you know, like in, in, in the future, perhaps for personals, like personal signups, that might be a potential, but I could just let you guys know that for your whole team, that that's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> Mer, uh, merchant, merchant sustainability, the whole um, and the whole um, new anti-fraud measures in place. Um, hey, I, I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to address that too. You yep. know, and that's another thing is that you know we haven't been able to send out mass communication because we haven't got that infrastructure set up yet, and I understand that's frustrating. Um, that people have to hear a lot of the information from leadership. You know, um, if, if I could get on the call all day and explain to everybody what's up, who's trying to build a business here, I would, you know, but I'm just trying to get the infrastructure laid so that we can move forward more smoothly, you know. Um, in terms of the merchants, basically, guys, here's what, here's what happened. We had a merchant. It was Stripe. Stripe is like the number one merchant used throughout the entire world. Everyone uses it. But the thing about Stripe is that even though they approved our business, they don't typically allow MLM companies or any high risk companies. So what happened was, what happened was, is I'm pretty sure we were targeted, but that aside is that basically they sent us an email and they were like, hey, you know, we're stopping your incoming, we're not gonna allow you to take payments any further. Everything that's in your Stripe account, which was like weeks worth of pay is frozen for, uh, what was it? Was it three months or six months? Three, three, months, three months, for three months. It's still frozen right now. <clears throat> so we had no time. Luckily, we had already had, because we knew that there was a situation with Stripe where it could possibly happen, we had already secured the merchant processors that we needed. But unfortunately, and this is kind of a reoccurring theme, is that the development team took a while to get it out. And it was it's a complicated integration when you start dealing with everyone's credit cards, you know, and you got to make sure it's done right. Um, you know, so that's what happened there. But now we have very secure merchants. We have backup merchants. We've got, we're completely secure in terms of merchant processing right now. So I'm not worried at all about that. Neither should you guys. Okay. Anti-fraud, anti-fraud measurements in place. Cause I know that that's something people just saw popping up, um, <laughs> you know, address, address why they're there, why they're important. And, you know, um, kind of the future for that as well. <laughs> David, I'd be happy to address that. And I'll try and address it in a way that um, is civilized, even though it's a very frustrating topic for me. Because nothing is more irritating than seeing people who are ruining things for everyone else involved and causing problems. And what has happened is, is that there's a, a large group of people who are ignoring the policies and procedures and signing up a ton of different people on cards, like one card, um, and causing, I mean, first of all, I don't know if people understand this, but when you register somebody else and you agree to terms and conditions for them and you register them into a service, you, that's fraudulent. You can't do that. And when you do that, what you're doing is, is you put yourself, you put the company, and you put every single person involved with the company at risk. Because what happens is, is that what happens next is we get an email that says, hey, there's a hundred unauthorized charges on my card. Chadera is a scam and y'all are committing credit card fraud. 
And really what happened is some idiot gave their card to one of the uplines who was asking for their information who shouldn't have been to try and sign them up. And then they gave them permission to do it. And then they're just, everyone's trying to take advantage of the system mm -hmm. and they're doing things in a way that's causing a problem. And so what we did, and we did this, and people should be very glad that we put these measures in place because it just goes to show you that we're trying to stick around for a long time. The, because people would not listen and continue to do that, we had to put in fraudulent prevention measures. And what that basically means is, is that if you're registering for an account, you have to use your own card. You can't use Bill's card down the street. You got to use your own card. You know, you can't use your upline's card, you know, and your upline can't go and register you for services on their own. You got to use your own stuff. And guys, we did this because if we did not, if we did not address this and we kept letting, if you guys knew the scope of the problem, we literally had one, we have cards, one individual card with hundreds of people signed up on it. You know, like if you guys understood how big the problem was, you'd understand we did this to protect your businesses and protect the company. Okay. Now, right now, the, the restrictions that we have on the card are very tight. Okay. And we want to loosen the restrictions to where there's a happy medium of fraud prevention and um, user friendliness. Okay. Because like right now, the way it's set up is that the capitalization has to match the prefix, the suffix, the middle, it's all got to match. Right. So the thing is, is that we have to address the card issue immediately at the time, because when we got the new merchant processors, they were not having it. Okay. They weren't having it. So we had to address it immediately. And right now we have the development team working on uh, the new payment system for IBO commissions, okay, which took precedence over going in and adding a bunch of more updates to that card prevention. Okay. But when they're done with that, we will have them loosen up the restrictions a little bit on the cards to where it, maybe it's like the only the last name that has to match or something like that. Okay. But for now it's going to be a little bit strict for the next few weeks. That's why we had to do it. We're just doing it to protect you guys and protect the company. You know, and, and, you know, guys, I'm also going, I, I'm going to touch on what they said because um, I was probably one of six or seven people that was heavily impacted by fraud in the past. Um, you know, I had a teammate that was literally signing up a whole bunch of people and uh, it was something like 40 40, 50 people that were all signed up on one card. And when, when the chargebacks began, you know, they needed to go ahead and uh, refund preemptively in order to pre protect the merchant. That was the right thing to do. It was a tough call. And, and, and you know, and Cody and I, we talked about that. Easton and I talked about that as well. But it was a tough call, but it was the right call, even though it meant that there were some people that were digging out of negative numbers in their organization because I, I want to let you guys know in case you don't know this that when a refund or a chargeback happens that you lose the volume for that person and a negative one is added so if you have one person with 150 accounts on their card and they refund all of them you now need to you lose 150 but now you have a negative 150 to dig out of as well. So, you know, it's absolutely imperative that, you know, that these anti-fraud measurements are in place. Um, okay. Uh, hey, David, David, real quick. I do want to add something else. I read a comment on here. Looks like Bethany Garner. Um, yep. She said, you know, a lot of people in a lot of these countries that don't have access to credit cards as easily and, and I, wanted to, I wanted to make a comment about that because we're in a lot of countries and there are a lot of countries that can't, you know, don't have cards, whether or not it's an access issue or it's just a, they just don't use it that often issue. You know, I totally understand that it, it restricts access for those people, you know, who don't have cards in their own name. And I want you to know that I understand that. Um, and, but I also want you to understand that we can't have one card with a bunch of people on it. We just can't. You know, it just doesn't work from a legal perspective and a compliance perspective. And so while I do understand that, the credit card thing is not going to work, you know, and we're looking into other ways that we can take funds um, that might open up the doors for some of that. But it's it's a very tasking process to be able to accept payment from other methods. But we'll, we'll 
Mm-hmm. And, and I'll, I'll just add, guys, there are over 300 million people in the U.S. alone, um, and there are only 40,000 people in the company, roughly. So um, there's more than enough people to still talk to. Uh, that's you know, find, find solutions. Um, don't don't highlight problems. Okay. Um, PayPal, absolutely not. They don't work with MLMs. Um, that's a very simple question and answer. Um, okay, customer service. Where, where, where are we at with that? People are complaining about, you know, backlogs and, you know, not hearing from customer support and da 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 Well, David, we, we figured if we ignored people long enough, they'd just go away. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't bring the pitchforks out. I'm just kidding. So we we are actively, it's one of the things that we're working on, we've been working on um, the last couple of weeks. We're actually getting uh, set up to bring on about, uh, we're about to almost triple, almost triple the uh, support staff here in the near future that's going to help with these backlogs. You know, and there's a couple of things that go into that as well. Um, They're not, they're not just there for support. You know, these guys are also sending out your payouts and the way that the payouts are set up right now, it's not very convenient for anybody. Okay. It's not convenient for them. It's not convenient for you guys. So implementing this new payout system as well is going to free up a lot of their time. So we're looking to triple the support team here, hopefully within the next month. Um, that should be kicking and rolling. And, uh, you know, at that point, once all that's implemented, we're actually getting a new support system implemented as well. Yeah, there's a and lot at that point, there's a lot that goes into this, but at that point, it will be very, very easy for us to scale up and keep up with the growth of the company. Yeah, and, and I wanna to add to that too, because I think a lot of people, the thing is, is that in reality, most of the people who are on this call have probably never even heard our voice or seen our face other than if they are going through the platform, which I hope that they are, they would probably get tired of hearing us on there. but. The thing is, is that we've been around for over a year now. You know, Tradera launched in April 1st, 2019. We've been around for so long. And the thing is, is that the support staff that we had did an amazing job for a year. And then all of a sudden, over the last five months, you know, we've had 25,000 more people come in. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's been, you know. It's a, it's a great problem to have, yeah. you know, and it's being addressed. So that'll, that'll be a lot. That'll work out a lot smoother here in the near future. I know one of the one of the guys on the support team was like, <laughs> "I went to go respond, to this problem, but uh, they figured out the problem. It's not a problem for them anymore." So, <laughs> you know, a lot of the things that go in there aren't dire issues. Um, one thing I do want to mention on this call too, because this is one of the things that gets that floods member support for some odd reason. Um, if you're a founder and you get charged. It's because you don't have an IBO membership. And it seems like that even that is in our compensation plan breakdown, and it's all it's plastered all over that thing. It just seems like these guys were not informed or they forgot to do it and they're just a little upset. But a lot of people in there um, are founders without IBO memberships. And for that reason, they, they won't qualify for the bonus in the compensation plan, the free membership bonus. Don't get me started on the So let's... <laughs> 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 we can go all night. So, so you know, and that's um, there are things that we can put in place for that, uh, make it more apparent. You know, when the mass email system is up, <laughs> we can just spam all of you guys to make sure that you have the IBO membership um, every week. So, <laughs> in, in, in all in all seriousness, um, there are uh, there are a lot, and I mean a lot of new things coming to Tradera, and. Um, you know, last month we had to focus on a bunch of infrastructural stuff. Obviously, for those of you who are here, you know what I'm talking about. It was a giant mess with the technical issues, right? That pushed back the development timeline a little bit. But guys, there's going to be an entirely new registration process that's way more informative, explains the packaging, references the website, gives everything broken down. You're not going to need the social security number to sign up. There's going to be a lot of the registration process. The new back office is going to be completely redesigned. It's going to be so stupid simple that even the dumb, I shouldn't say that. It's going to be really simple, okay? Very, very user-friendly for everybody, okay? And it's going to be, um, there's going to be a ton of new features back there. We're going to have a whole section for IBOs, for training, for marketing materials, for all of these different things. 
the clients, we're going to have new services. New services are coming to Tradera that are going to be insane things that no other company in the world has got. They are coming to Tradera. They will be coming with the new back office and everything, the whole new slew of things that are coming to Tradera over the next few months. You know, and one of those things is going to be addressing all of that. So, you know, trust me, like we're working <laughs> on it, you know, when we're either going to have a giant billboard message that goes across the top that says, hey, I see you qualify for a rank. Maybe you should upgrade to IBO so you actually qualify for it. You know, we're either going to do that or we're going to send out an email. It's like, hey, maybe you should upgrade to IBO. That way, you know, in case the people that are, because the thing is like, it's only somewhat people's fault if they don't go read the actual comp plan that they're participating in. I also blame the leadership. So, and if you're on this call, I, you know, that's a direct message to you to make sure that you are properly representing our comp plan and making sure people understand it. Because the thing is, is when you falsely misrepresent what the company is about and they get irritated, not only do they get irritated at us, not only do they get irritated at you, but now you lose money just like we lose money and your reputation shot just like our reputation shot, you know, and that's not what we're about. So just make sure that you're representing things appropriately. I don't want to see a single, I swear to God, if I get an email that comes through to my address to a screenshot of someone on Facebook telling someone they're going to make millions of dollars from <laughs> depositing in a coconut into their, into their trade account. Oh, oh my God. God. I'm going to lose my mind. Do not do that. Please just be respectful, operate with the, you know, a moral code and some ethics, represent us well, represent yourself well, and truly like, just don't scam people. Like that's the best way to put it. <laughs> oh. you know, like, I was going to ask them to address compliance. Cause that's like a really, really big deal on social yep, media. Let, 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 let's talk about compliance, please. Yeah. Please, yeah, let's, let's you. talk about that. Make, make as long you, as you before want, you, too. <laughs> before, wait, before you do that, I want to make sure everybody understands that you need to upgrade to IBO after you hit founder because we do have a pure customer rule that many people have no idea what that means. So we, when we say upgrade to IBO, we mean after founder rank. That makes it free. Just yeah. want to be clear. If you don't follow directions or you uh, too many people upgrade before a founder, you can't get penalized. You can you know, skip a check. I've seen people hit night and not be able to get paid because too many people started off as IBO. So want to make that clear. Upgrade to F IBO after you have your first three personals on your link and your back office says founder. I have said that so many times that people have said, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> so I'm just going yeah, to I'm just going to say that if you plan on building a team, you might want to might want to grab the IBO I think, I think Max, you know, like I understand where you're coming from from the building perspective, but I think a lot of times what happens is, at least from what I've seen, is that people are told you need three and then it's free and then you can just upgrade later. And then what happens is their renewal date comes and they're not upgraded. And then it's like World War Five. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, so definitely guys upgrade to founder. Uh, upgrade to founder. Upgrade to IBO when you hit founder. And, and, and this is the way I say it in every last one of the webinars I do. We go over the services first and then I tell you guys you get all of this for $99 every four weeks, right? And, and that's everything that was just covered and everything that I'm going to deal with from this point on, talking about the comp plan, is $15 extra and you need to be an IBO in order to participate in it. And so I don't know why that confusion remains, especially because, you know, we've had thousands of people on those webinars, guys, you upgrade if you want to participate in any part of the compensation plan, you must have an IBO subscription, you need to you need to upgrade, it causes issues with, with the um, with the designation of whether you are a client or an IBO if they try to pay you out beforehand. Because what's really happening, let me help you guys, is that the client membership is $99 every four weeks. So when you hit founder, it's almost like the company is paying you $99 to cover your membership, okay? So it's, so what really needs to happen 
is that you need to understand that the upgrade needs to happen after, after you hit founder, if you want the free membership. Now, if you don't, if you don't, and you just want to be a client, great. Kudos to you. You know, that's fine. Um, but, um, you know, it's just, uh, it's just, you need to understand it. I know that's in every last one of the videos I do. I know it's in every last one of the videos that Dom does. Um, so if you're getting that information elsewhere, and here's the other thing, and, and I'm going to challenge everyone here because we're about to get to, into compliance. If you see a video that does not represent that well, it is your responsibility as a person who saw that video to let us know. All right. It is not the next person's job to let us know that they saw something non-compliant. If you see something not compliant, it is your responsibility as a member of Tradera to report that non-compliant post, that non-compliant marketing, that non-compliant video. Everything needs to be reported and that rests on every last member of Tradera. And with that, you know, let's talk about compliance in a real big way because um, now people are saying, how do you report it? Which I think is a very, very good question. That's fair. That's fair. So I'm just going to tell you right now, if anyone on here, if I catch anyone on here <laughs> just throwing out profits, like, oh, I made all this money, or saying, hey, how would you like to make this much a week? You know, I'm just going to terminate you. Okay? Okay. Please make me catch a flight. <laughs> a reasonable process of uh, punishment. It's reasonable and fair. <laughs> and maybe click the termination button at some point. All right, but seriously, guys, you know, like, I, it, it's great if you're making money with the platform. That's awesome. You know, I know that you guys might be excited and proud of that. And honestly, the safest way to go about anything is anything that has to do with income cannot be taught. Like, I know a lot of people, I haven't seen a ton of people do it here, but I've seen a ton of people um, in this niche. They will show the screenshots of their profits and stuff like that. And like, yeah, you're proud of that and everything, but you have to understand that that is not okay because that counts as enticement if you're trying to entice people to join. You flunk your money on your phone. Phones all over the internet. You know, that's not, that's not a good idea. I know someone asked um, how to report it. Um, right now, it needs to go to the support email and in the subject line, in the subject line, it needs to say compliance. Okay, that'll get uh, that'll get the quickest response. Um, we're setting up another sector. Okay, to we're the, setting up a whole team for compliance. yeah. We're setting up another sector. Um, looking to bring on uh, some some people to the corporate side and stuff. We're talking with um, our legal team exactly what is the best way to to bring on corporate staff for that position, stuff like that. What needs to happen because you guys, you know, we're not from this industry. So we do a lot of consulting with the legal team and stuff like that. Um, but right now, uh, it needs to go to the support email subject line compliance. It'll get looked at a lot faster. And if you don't have a subject line goal, uh, you, you're dead last. You probably won't get a response until the very end. I'm just going to be honest with you. Someone asked, what if you post small trade profits? Is that a problem? If well, you, first of all, you're probably not going to attract a lot of people with that. I'm dead. Instead of posting that you turned a dollar fifty into two dollars, you know, it's because it's equally a problem. If I go on Facebook right now and I show my trade account and I show that I'm up twenty thousand dollars, I'm going to get a letter in the mail from the CFTC and we're going to have a big problem. <laughs> if I go on Facebook Live and I show that I'm up twenty cents. And I say, join Tradera. I made 20 cents trading today. I'm going to have an equal problem, okay? You can't do it. You just, you know, like you can't post profits. You know, and I get it, guys. Like I went through a phase, you know, where I was, I was, I loved all, I was making all this money. You know, I'm so excited. I'm just like, look at all this money I'm making trading. You know, I want to show everybody. I get it. For those of you who are having success trading, I understand why you want to post your profits and share that with people. You have to understand that not everyone's having that success, you know? And a lot of it comes down to time in, you know? Some, some people just aren't good at it, you know? Like, 
you know, so they're just happy sometimes. Not everyone's a NASCAR driver, you know, like it's, you know, so, but it comes down to everyone's situation is going to be different. Everyone's got a different amount of equity. Not everyone's got 500 K in a trading account. You know, some people got like 30 cents in there, you know, not everyone's been, been uh, a part of Tradera for a year studying the material, you know, not everyone's been trading for years on end. You know, like you guys have to understand that when you make a representation of your success, what the regulatory agencies will do. And just so you guys know, okay, it's not just a matter of our company. We're trying to protect us. They will come for you personally. They will come for you. Okay. You personally, I want you to keep that in mind. There's a, when we give you this information, we're trying to protect you too. Okay. You guys want to market Tradera. You want to market the success you're having. Okay. You got to do it in a way that's not showing people money. I don't want you taking a photo next to a Lambo and telling someone that they're going to get that in their first week. That's just ridiculous. Come on now, you know, <laughs> like I don't want y'all doing that. You know, I don't want you posting profits. I want you staying next to a Lambo. Okay. I don't want you posting checks. No. If you post your check, you're not going to get another check. Okay. You know, well, say like that again. Uh, say that again, Cody. I would love to hear that. <laughs> stay I'll that say again. Say it. I'll say it again. I'm, I'm so serious. If you post your check, you will not get another check from Tradera, okay? And I'm not saying that because I'm a mean person or I just don't have empathy for people who are trying to market and stuff. I understand you're excited because you're making money, but you guys have to understand that we operate in the MLM industry, okay? And guys, when you operate in an MLM industry, you are under tight regulations from regulators, okay? You can't go around doing that, okay? And the same logic kind of with trading applies to the marketing side. Not everyone got that check that week, okay? Why can't David go on Facebook and show, show a $25,000 check this week? Because him and one other person are the only people that made a $25,000 check this week. So when he goes on there and shows that, now we've got a problem and we got the CFTC and the FTC knocking on our door, upset, wanting to shut us down, rightfully so, because people are being misled. You know what I'm saying? Like, guys, you just have to do things in a way that you have to take it from the, from the perspective of the person you're talking to. You know, it's one thing to tell someone, hey, I'm at the position of this. I'm being paid this. You know, here's how you do that. But you can't go showing the money and showing the profits and stuff like that. You know, like you have to let them know, you know, it's going to take hard work. It's going to take you know, uh, these skills and it's not, it's, you know, you're not guaranteed to make it, you know, like, but I'll work with you. You know, like there's a way to do it, guys. It's, that's you know, appropriate. Yeah. Just be decent human beings. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Like, Hit it on the head. That's it. <laughs> and and, and I, I will touch on this because um, Cody Easton and I, we, we had a rather long conversation before I actually joined this company. Um, and and I can, I can let you guys know. There are certain things that we put in place that have already be, been run by Cody and Easton. So the rent templates that we created that do not have any income on there, okay? Those were run by Cody and Easton before we released them. Um, you know, everything that, that I've done in regards to marketing, before I release it to you guys, I've run it by Cody and Easton. Um, and part of the reason why is because I understand that as MLMers, we want to absolutely run as fast as we can unencumbered. But I knew that as we are growing, if I didn't take the time to do it in a compliant fashion, that I, I would put the company at risk because then people's eyes would be on me as being one of the top er earners. And then my actions could then really bleed down. So Understand if you have a question about whether or not anything is compliant, you, typically that means don't use it until you have the answer. It doesn't mean post it up on your social media and wait to see whether or not you get a slap on your wrist. It means, you know, ask at least five, 10 people that are your uplines. And if any of them say, well, it might not, it means it probably isn't, <laughs> right? If there is any doubt, don't post it. Um, and also, if your upline's an idiot, message corporate. You know, 
<laughs> I'll let you know for sure. You don't have to worry. You know, they'll, we have a legal consultancy department. You can message in. We'll run it by them, and they'll let you know. No, you can't post this. You're telling Bill he's going to make a million dollars this week. Shut it down. You know, they'll let you know that. You don't have to worry. <laughs> okay, so uh, just a couple... Okay. Real quick, David, not to cut you off, but I seen a comment that I wanted to address. Um, somebody asked if we had income income disclaimers, and guys, that's on the website. There's a whole section for compliance on the website, and you guys can take a look at any of the top um, income earners um, on our team, and you'll see when we make posts, we have that long disclosure, right? So you guys want to make sure that you go to, uh, I believe it's tradera.org slash compliance. Yes. And read the information on the website, okay, guys? Yes. Now, if you're still sitting there promising Bill a Lambo and you post the long compliance thing. Well, well yeah, they're wrong for that. <laughs> Slap them on the wrist, Cody. It's okay. <laughs> yep. And, and guys, uh, I want to go ahead and also highlight something else. So it, it's come up a lot of times um, now from one person in particular. Why are there not social media profiles? I know that they could go ahead and they could address this, but I'm going to address this specifically as someone who is part of this business. I, every single day, every single day, get 100 to 500 messages in my social media inbox. Preach, David. And, and, if, and mm -hmm. if I don't answer every last one of them, I, 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 I would use different language if, corporate wasn't here but i'm a jerk <laughs> i'm a jerk <laughs> if i don't answer every single one of them but that's forgivable because i'm just a rep mm -hmm. if corporate ownership doesn't answer it now you know it, it, it's another big deal and by the way the fake profiles report them what we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so guys i'm not accepting donations on facebook i i, I understand there's a bunch of profiles of me I've seen some of the screenshots. There's like a photo of me on Facebook and it's like something about me being this happy philanthropist and saying I'm accepting donations. Let me just be clear, I don't have a Facebook. That's not me. So whoever you've been donating to, they're just chilling, making all this money. That's not me. So please don't, <laughs> please report them and don't donate. Yeah. <laughs> Same here guys, there's a, pro, there's a profile or two of me out there. It's not me. Okay, it's it's not. So if you see us online, if you see us on Facebook or Instagram, it ain't us. Okay. Now I know uh, Cody's Cody's got his own uh, viewpoint, but David's right here. You know, we're not. I'm personally not on Facebook because I <laughs> don't get me started on this. That's really I'm not on Facebook because I do not have time to answer thousands of messages every day. You know, we're working real hard on the back end. I do not have time for that. You know, I deleted my Instagram a long time ago, you know, I just, when you get something like this, you know, it, a lot of people tend to reach out and just like beg for money at that point. Okay. I thought, you know, I, I got my friend's phone number. That's who I stay connected with my friends, my family. I'm not, <laughs> I'm done. I don't like getting harassed on social media. So I don't have social media. Simple as that. Yep. Did you want to, Oh, you want me to address why I'm not on social media? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so we've been, we've been getting this over the last couple of weeks. There's been like this apparently this movement going on online that says that we don't exist. That we're just fugazi, fugazi, fairy dust apparently. And I get I get, I don't know why people think that we're operating out of some kind of sheik's tent out in Saudi Arabia with you know like <laughs> I don't understand where this is coming from when there's hundreds of hours of videos of us in the back office. But just to address why I'm not on social media, why I'm, I'm not online, okay, is because, <laughs> look, guys, I mean, we, you have to understand, we're running an international company, and there's a lot of work that goes into that. These uplines can tell you guys, I don't sleep. Like, I'm not going to sleep tonight. I've got to stay up with the development team, and then I've got to stay up to deal with the Philippines, and then I've got to stay up to deal with the corporate stuff here in the U.S., I don't get to sleep until tomorrow at like four o'clock and I'm going to get like three hours. Okay. I'm not on social media because I'm busy running this company. And when I'm not in the back end working on Tradera to make it the best it can be and promote the vision of the company, I also do have a life. I really do. I've got family, friends. I've got, you know, sometimes I like to just spend some time with myself. I travel, 
you know, like I'm not on social media. Like I'm not on, I'm not on YouTube, you know, like monetizing videos or on Instagram scrolling through models feeds, you know, like I don't have time for that. You know, like I've got my own life to live, you know? And the thing is, is y'all have to understand, like I can respect that a lot of people who are going to come into Tradera and be associated with us will be online a lot. Okay. Because they're marketing, which makes total sense. And I respect that. But you guys have to understand, I'm not marketing, okay? I'm a trader. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why we have a referral compensation program so that we can attract people, okay, who do market and they can fill that role for the company. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I'm not online, you know, making videos, doing this, doing that, okay? I'm working on the back end for the company and that's just the way it is, you know? And the thing is, is another thing you guys have to understand is, and I know that a lot of people have, have said that they want to see us and like, apparently like we don't like people. That's not the case. It's just, you guys have to understand that we've been in a pandemic. All right. Like things have been tough for everybody. I haven't gotten to see a lot of people that I wanted to see the way that I had envisioned things by now was that we would have already done had events. You know what I mean? Like we wanted leadership retreats. We wanted events. We wanted all these things. We wanted to be able to see and meet everybody. And we haven't been able to do that yet. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's, we do want that, but we're having to wait for everything to clear up, you know? Yep. Um, um, I had a question for you guys real quick, not to cut you off, David. What's the vision for our mobile app? Because a lot of people don't even know that that's coming. And I know we talked about that before. Um, so the field is kind of excited about hearing about that. That's fair. That's fair. So with the mobile application, um, we had it as on, it's, it's on the list of things to do. It does not take priority. Honestly, we're because we've got to re we're completely redesigning the back office, you know, so all the work that, <laughs> that had been done on the mobile app, it's, it's in the trash right now. Because we're going to completely redesign the back end. It's got to sync up with that. Everything's got to, it's going to look uh, way better. But right now, a mobile app is coming. It is not the priority, though. Okay? So I understand that. I know some guys like, PDFs don't work on my, on my phone or something. They're like, yeah, we understand that. You need to use a laptop or a computer to be the PDFs. But also, a lot of people don't even know that there's hundreds, there's over 100 videos in the technical analysis section that will play on your phone. Okay? A lot of people don't even know that that section exists. It's, it's the last section in the education platform. That's where the meat of everything is at. Um, but the mobile app, it is coming, but it is off on the back burner at this time because we need to get uh, the new payout system out. We gotta get the back offices redone. We've got structural things that need to be taken care of before the focus switches over to the app. Hey guys, I'm reading the comments. I'm reading some of the comments and some people are asking why I bashed some of the leadership in the company. And there's a reason why I made the comments I made. And the reason why is because there are some people in the company that are really screwing people over. Like they are genuinely screwing people over. Okay. And that's not okay. They're really doing it. I, I, can tell, I promise you might not be associated with it. Your group of people may be fantastic doing things the right way, pure integrity. There are groups in this company that are screwing people over. Okay. And it's something that we're trying to address. We're trying to get information and move forward. That's why we're putting together a compliance department. But we've been made aware of a lot of things going on that are just not okay. So when I say, for example, if your upline's an idiot, contact corporate because we can give you the right information. I'm referring to the, to the uplines that are genuinely scamming people using our platform and telling them things that are just completely wrong and screwing people's lives up. That's what I'm referring to and it's not okay. And that's why I get passionate about that because that's not what we stand for. That's not what we're about. We don't want any of that here. Yep. Um, uh, securing of the uh, the alerts. That, that's the next one. I think that also goes pr probably hand in hand with customer service and uh, up in the, uh, <laughs> the number of people working. But um, right now we've had a, a bunch of people that still have access to the alerts, even though they're not active members of Tradera. Um, mm -hmm. So what are the plans there, if any? So there's a couple of different things that we've talked about doing with that. Um, a, we could completely get rid of that and then set up a new channel, right? And we can put that link in the active members back office, okay? We could do that. 
or when the email mass email system comes up and is running smooth, we can send everyone the new link. Now, are these guys going to trickle back in? Yeah, I'm sure somehow or another they'll trickle back in. That issue is not going to be 100% solved until the mobile app comes out. You know, there's things we can do to get those people out, um, but they're slowly going to creep back in and we'll have to redo the process again, probably have to send out a new link. You know, we're aware of the issue um, and we've, we've talked a couple of different ways that we could do that. We haven't decided on what we want to do with that just yet. The ultimate fix is the mobile app. Yeah. And unfortunately, and I know everyone wants the mobile app out and we've been promising the mobile app for a long time. I remember when David first came into Tradera, I was like, David, I understand you want all these things done for the IBOs, but we told all of our clients and our members that we were giving them a mobile app. So sorry, David, sucks to suck, but this is what we're doing. And, you know, we've keep, that's where our stance was six months ago. We still don't have the mobile app out. And the reason why it's been so hard to get the mobile app out is because we're constantly updating, upgrading, and adding new features to the back office. Literally, in, in hopefully in the next three months, that back office will, will not even be recognizable for what it is now. The services will be there's going to be more services, new features, new update. Everything is going to be so different. So we can't put out a mobile app based on the back office right now when all those changes are coming. It needs to be based on that back office. So that's what the delay is, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. Uh, guys, just an update. I, I've, seen, I've seen a few questions that I'm just going to address real quick. PayPal, absolutely not. Um, that, that one's real simple to answer. That's the second time I've said that. Um, also, um, La Latino community, French, um, Co Cody and Easton, you know, I want to take the time and say thank you just for giving me the latitude to, you know, put my team on the translations. Um, but you know, the closed captions for English, Spanish and French, the last of the files were sent today. Um, it, so like all of the technical analysis now, there are subtitles in English, Spanish, and French. And I do want to highlight, and, and this is important, guys, a lot of the times that, you know, we ask certain questions, it's because we haven't spent enough time in the platform, right? And, and, and I, want to, I want to be clear about this, and, and you know, and then I'll, I'll, bring, I'll bring up the other questions that I'm seeing, but if you do not know why you are not qualified for a rank and you are an IBO, it means that you are not in your back office enough. I'm going to say that again. If you do not know why you were not qualified for a rank and you are an IBO, it means that you are not in your back office enough. It's pretty simple to go ahead and look at your rank analysis and know what needs to be done. And so what's not okay is I miss my rank and it's Monday morning and I don't know why and I didn't communicate with anyone and now it's a company and now it's the expectation that the company is going to go back and fix your oversight or, you know, just your mistake because you didn't have a, a chance to go ahead and uh, you, you weren't spending enough time in the back office. Um but, you know, other than that, thank you guys for the latitude. French and Spanish is already done. Uh, guys, languages are not cheap and they are not quick. Um, so, you know, I understand everyone wants every single language on the face of the planet integrated into the back office tomorrow. Um, <laughs> listen, I, I told Cody and Issa my team would get it done in a month. They, they were like, we'd be pretty impressed if you did. Um, but, you know... <laughs> It, I, I was a couple days late. <laughs> yeah. They did a great job on that. Yeah, appreciate that, brother. Yeah, everyone, everyone, you should say thank you to David for doing that. All the subtitles and all the videos, English, French, Spanish, all videos that are covered with that, that was his team that's work. He put them to do that. He paid for that out of his own pocket. Everyone should be thanking David for that. that was, thank you, man. That was that was great. Yeah, appreciate you. No, no, no oh. problem, guys. Um, other than that, is there a way... Oh yeah, the, the expired members tab. <laughs> oh yes, yes. Yeah. The, the so, yeah, yeah. So, so with the with the team building tools, got everybody. 
Um, there's a lot of new things that are going to be coming with the back office, the, the new back office when it comes out. Um, there's going to be an area for your sponsor that has all your sponsors' contact information. You're going to be able to see it. There's an area that's going to be just for your personal referrals and will have their contact information. Um, if there's going to be an area where it shows all of the people that are inactive on your team and it'll even tell you what leg they're on. There's going to be, there's going to be so many resources that come out with the new back office. And that's one. Okay. Um, the address field, uh, the address field alert that never goes away. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <so. laughs> that's just there to screw with people. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> So there, there was an issue with the pop-up box, okay, guys? So everyone, everyone pay attention to this. There was an issue with it. It's resolved, okay, but it's still up. So if you have not updated your information, your billing information, go update it, click save. It's not going to go away, okay? <laughs> All right, we're going to leave it up for a little while longer to give everyone a chance to update their information, but it's been really screwing with people up there. Everyone's like, Yo, I already did this. Why is it asking me to do it again? It, it's not leaving. So okay. it was like, I logged out like five times. It's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing. Yeah, yeah. So just don't freak out. You know, <laughs> it, it is what it is. We're leaving that box up there for a little while longer. And uh, but we'll get it removed shortly. If you've if you've filled it out and clicked save with the appropriate information, you're good. Okay, don't worry about it. Hey, someone uh somebody asked about the site kicking you off for inactivity ah. great question so first of all let me um, let me explain why it's doing it and then i'll explain kind of where we're heading with that so first of all the reason why it's doing it so last month servers crashed right before the merchant crash yeah. it was just a concoction of total it was a wonderful time what's a colorful adjective that's appropriate it, it was just sucked there we go okay so all that happened at the same time now the server crash took place because 10,000 new people enrolled in the span of about three weeks and overloaded the servers. Okay, great problem to have. And you know what? I take full responsibility for not having the IT team prepared for that. And I can tell you guys that what I did after that happened, you guys understand, we were up and operational for a year, no technical problems to that regard. So, you know, we weren't really ready for that, to be honest, you know? But what we did after that happened was we hired a team of software developers that specifically monitor server load every single day so that it will not happen again. We literally paid them just to do that. So now, why we have the, the back office kick you off for inactivity? Because when you sit idle in the back office, it clogs up the server load. And so when you've got 25,000 people that have been logged in for, for three days, <laughs> You know, not doing anything because they're not studying because they're watching Netflix, but they're still logged in. It's going to overload the service and cause problems. So it kicks you out. I understand that it kicks you out really fast, you know, and what we're going to do is we're going to extend the time. That way it kicks you out after like 30 minutes or like an hour or something like that. Uh, but we're going to address that um, in like a few weeks or when, when the team is done with the new payment system. Guys, everything right now on hold for the new payment system. Yeah. That's our focus. We want the new payment system out. For everybody who keeps asking, the new payment system will be completely automated. That means because right now we have a team that has to sit there and go through and send all the payments every week, thousands. It's ridiculous, okay? It's a lot of work for them. And what, what happens is, is, and not only is it a lot of work for them, there's limits to the different methods that we're paying out right now. It's daily owners, transfer wise. You can't send more than 20K a day in transfer wise. That's a problem because there's so many people making money, okay? Cue an income disclaimer somewhere. But the reality is that it's a really a problem because we have a lot more than that to pay out every week, okay? The, even down to the checks that get sent out, 100K a day limit, that's a problem. Not enough money is there. So again, with all these different methods, there's a lot of reasons why every week the payments take, you know, that's why there's a, in the FAQ you'll see, you know, you earn your rank every Sunday night at midnight CST, the company, We'll process your payment, ideally within the next one to three business days. Depending on whatever method you've got, it may take an additional few days. Transfer-wise, specifically, 
gets very backed up because there's a 20K a day limit. So let's say for an example, there's $200,000 that's scheduled to be paid out in a week for transfer wise. If that were the case, then you could see how it would take 10 days for all the transfer wise payments to get done. And that's the issue. That's why in order to help everyone's experience and help cater these IBOs and get everyone paid really fast, our team is 100% focused on the new payment system, which will be automatic, okay? And not only will it be automatic, it will have a lot more withdrawal options. I think a lot of people think that TransferWise is direct deposit. It's not. TransferWise is TransferWise. It's not the same thing as direct <laughs> deposit. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Okay, Ooh. now look, it's totally cool. If that's you, that's fine. It's okay. <laughs> but here's the thing. The new, the new system will be really will be direct deposit, okay? ACH transfer to your bank account, okay? There's gonna be uh, crypto withdrawal options. There's gonna be a lot of withdrawal options for people using the new system, and it's just gonna be fantastic, okay? So right now, that's the team's primary focus, and that will be their focus over the next couple weeks because it's a big integration that's taking place for the new payment system. So nothing else is getting done in the next couple weeks. Everything else will pick up once that's done. Because every single week that goes by, that, that many more payouts need to be processed and it becomes a bigger problem every single week exponentially. Great problem to have. The company's growing, people are seeing success. It needs to be addressed, you know? I don't wanna put the company in a situation where one of the, you know, people aren't getting paid. You know, that's not a good situation to be in. And another thing, guys, I'm just gonna be honest with you. The companies, similar to the, to the merchant account that we used before, you know, they accepted the business model but they also aren't too MLM friendly, you know? So it's kind of another one of those things where that's the priority is getting that system out that will make sure that everybody here is protected and will get their pay on time. And just that's the focus right now. So everything else will wait after that. Um, fo follow up on, uh, on what everything that was just said. When, um, when I pay out is integrated, does that mean that people will have the option to automatically pay their membership from uh, commissions? on the e-wallet or um, so that's the number one question that I get with in regards to removals. Good question. Good question. The answer is not at the beginning. Not at the beginning. That is something that will take a lot more time to integrate, but we will do hopefully at some point, but at first it won't operate like that. Okay. Um, recognition ranks for awards and all that other stuff um you know uh well what are the plans uh for recognition actually what are the plans for recognition not only for the field for hidden ranks but also um for uh traders because obviously we are a trading company an education company that's yeah so so it's a good question so for the field for the field they are rewarded every week with their pain. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Totally kidding. No, no. We definitely want to host events. We definitely want to have people on stage. We definitely want to have people recognized. Like I said, me personally, if it was up to me, look, I, I've got a background in biology. I was pre-med. I know a lot about the virus. If it was up to me, we would be at an event right now. It's going to let it run its course. That's my philosophy. Okay. If it was up to me, we'd already have the events. Okay. Unfortunately, we're at the mercy of the restrictions right now with the lockout. You know, once this clears up, that's one of our biggest priorities is establishing a culture within Tradera. I want to meet everybody. Yeah. You know, I want to meet everybody. I want to be trading with everybody. I want to be, you know, having a good time. I want to throw some leadership retreats. You know, I want to have a good time and meet everybody. So, and I want to get everyone recognized who's been working really hard. You know, I would love to do that. And that, that's definitely in the plans as soon as we can get out of lockdown mode. Absolutely. Somebody asked in the comments, they said, why can clients not, why do they not have their referral link until they've been placed? Because <laughs> if, because if you're not placed in the genealogy, you can't place anyone in the genealogy yourself because you don't exist in the genealogy. And what happened was at the beginning of the company, we had it set to where like you could still refer people even if you weren't placed yet. And what would happen is if someone would try and refer someone and try and place them and then they just disappeared because there's nowhere to, 
they don't exist in the genealogy. So we had to like put that in place where you have to place first. It's a, it's a technical thing. There's a lot of, there's a lot of questions in here. Guys, if you're asking questions in the comments and we're not responding to it, um, it's just because there's like literally thousands of comments. Uh, yeah, my picture is Cody Sell. Um, <laughs> the guy in, is that a Hunter Green? Is that the color? No, no, that's Jake from State Farm. Easton Harris doesn't. <laughs> the one looking like Jake from State Farm. Donald, he's gonna um, real quick, <laughs> y'all got me cracking up. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people, um, Cody and Easton, they ask you guys this history as traders. They want to know, you know, you guys' background with Forex. So, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. The first two years were hell, okay? <laughs> We've been trading yeah. for what, seven and a half, eight years? Something like that. Something like that. The first two years were a living hell. Made no money lost a lot of money in the market okay? that's why we tell you guys don't go out and tell people that you can make millions in your first week that's just not fair to people yeah you know like yeah it takes some time to get time to get good at it someone said talk about usd trial okay. oh they must have been around for a while, been around for a while yeah <laughs> but uh i love usd trial um but we've been trading for seven eight years you know the first two years were horrible it took us some time to to, to get break even we went from losing money to becoming break even to finally making money. And the thing is guys, once you, once you get it down, okay, once you get it down, you can start to have a lot of fun. Okay, and I'm not gonna get into that. Oh yeah, fun, fun is watching him stack five positions on UJ and blow his whole trading account back in the first two years. That's fun. That was first two years. That was fun. But uh, guys, you know, it's, it, it's trading, here's the thing, trading is stressful. Okay, I got a receiving hairline. You feel me? <laughs> Trading is stressful, especially at the beginning. Okay, and, and, and we understand that. And that's why we've broken down the platform the way that we have, because what we've put together is a platform that we wish we had. You know, the first yeah. two years we were sitting there, okay, trend lines. Let's try and figure that out. But it's not just about trend lines, it's how do you draw them? Where yeah. do you draw them? How does it work? Do you need a break and retest? Does this pair like trend lines or does it like support? I mean, there's a lot of things that go into this. We should have journals. I mean, journals. Yeah. They're just full of losing trades for the last two years. I remember, I remember how mad I was because uh, he went to Cancun and I had to stay back and back test the strategy we were working on for a week solid. <laughs> a 12 hour day, just back testing trying to figure out, did it work, did it not, why did it, why did it not? And that was like our lives for a long time. Yeah, it was, yeah. honestly guys, this is the, the worst time of my life. I'm gonna be totally honest. <laughs> like, it was not fun at all. But I kept seeing, I saw the vision. You know, I knew that if I could get, if I could get to this point, you know, I'm gonna be set. I'm gonna be okay, my family's gonna be okay, everyone's gonna be okay. Except for the guys who were hitting me up on Instagram asking me to pay their light bill. They're not okay. All right, but <laughs> it, it, it's it's a journey that we had to go through, and it really helps. It helped mold us into the people we are today. And that's why a lot of people, were, when they do talk to us, like, "Wow, you guys are really chill and laid back." It's because we're not worried about anything. You know, we got through that huge that huge hump. You know, I'm here to help you guys do that. And I, I really, I really hope that everyone is here and going through the education. Because guys, I mean, it is. It is phenomenal, and I've I've seen a lot of things out there. And there, I'm not even going to go there. Okay, you should go through the education if you haven't already. I mean, it is. We worked really hard on it, and we put a, a lot of the things that we went through on on the end right there. Just just sucking it for two years. Okay, a lot of the things that are in that trading education platform will resolve those issues. Yeah, so and you do not have to go through them. yeah just to be clear like we were losing money for years yeah you know like that doesn't mean we were making good money after two years <laughs> yeah we just stopped losing so much it's a journey it was a journey for us there's one thing everybody here has to understand is that there's a reason why tradera is here there's a reason why we have the vision that we have there's a hole there's a hole you cannot find proper trading education and, and before, because I already know people are going to be triggered because there's so many people that are like, 
have their own academies that have been around for years. When I'm not knocking anybody, I'm saying that in general, okay, the, almost all the information you guys can find online is just not true. It's just, there, it's not good information. It's, not. it's misleading and it's not correct. And they, they even, like, I'll give you an example. Someone might be teaching you, I don't know, supply and demand on YouTube, okay? And yes, supply and demand is a legitimate technical analysis tool. They're teaching it to you wrong, you know? Like, they're not using it correctly, you know? They don't, that's why they're on YouTube, you know? Am I on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on YouTube. I'm not on YouTube. You know, like, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to get at, guys. Like, there's a reason why Tradera exists. There's a reason, like, we wanted to fill that void and create a trading education platform that alleviates all the noise, all the BS, and all the struggles that we had to go through to get to the point where we were trading full time and making a living off that and making good money. That was the goal. And we wanted to make it a platform that was accessible for everybody. And that could take people from absolutely nothing all the way to where we are and more. And part of that is gonna become even more apparent with the new services that are gonna come out. Yes. And, and I think that a lot of people because here's the thing, and a lot of people don't understand this. This is a client-focused company. We are a trading-focused company. I don't care what you see on Facebook, okay? This, trust me, that is what our focus is at the very least, you know? And then that's why we do all the things that we do. And if you guys just go through the education, you will see what I'm talking about. Yeah. I know there's a lot of questions, and I even see them in the chat. Someone is, is mentioning the PDF trainings. Look, guys. The reason why there are PDFs, there's PDFs, there's videos, there's photos, there's a lot of different media sources out there to cater to a lot of different people, okay? There's a lot of people in the company that are actually deaf, you know? Like, they, they need, we need different forms of media. There's people learn in different ways, first of all. Second of all, some types of information are better explained in a written format. And when I say a written format, I'm really talking about more basic information you know, like, I'm not going to sit here and make an entire video in a PowerPoint over the definition of a pit. That just doesn't make sense. I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you what you need to know about it. And that's it. You know, and that's why a lot of the PDF trainings are going to be in the sections of the platform that are designed to give you basic structural information. Yeah. Okay. Because if you just skip down to technical analysis, where the majority of the, of the content is at, and you don't know anything about trading, you're going to get lost. Yeah. You're going to get lost and then you're going to get moody and then it's just, <laughs> you're just going to spiral downhill, you know? So the thing is, guys, is like the Forex section, the crypto section, the sections that are like specific for different fields of trading, those sections are designed to give you the basic information you need to know about that asset class in that industry. Okay. It's not, if you go to Forex, you're not going to learn how to trade Forex. You're going to learn what Forex is, how the Forex industry works, what you need to know about trading Forex, what makes it different from trading something else. A lot of basic information. You know, I'm not going to put a video in there about the hours of the market, you know, <laughs> like, but when you go down to the stuff where you're actually learning how to trade the different asset classes, that's where the video content is really powerful. You know, I would never put a PDF you know, explaining do you support resistance unless it was just an addition to a video that really got in the charts and broke it down, you know, because that's where the power is. Yeah. And you know, what you got to understand too, guys, is these other sections are like you said, they're just breaking down that asset class. Okay. The technical analysis section, it doesn't matter what asset class it is. Okay. Everything that's in the technical analysis section can be used to mark up and trade those different asset classes, okay? And all of that one technical analysis section applies to all of those, all of the asset classes, okay? So it's not like, and this is the thing too, a lot of people come in and they're like, well, yeah, I wanna learn Forex. And then they go through Forex and what they're really thinking, what they really wanna learn is technical analysis, but they don't understand what that is, right? Mm -hmm. These people are just misinformed. When people think Forex, they think of someone explaining how to draw support and resistance. That's not what Forex is. That's technical analysis. And that can be applied to any asset class. Yeah. I also think that, you know, in, in hindsight, 
I know a lot of people love the back office. We're really excited for the new back office and the new services and the way things are going to be. I think that in hindsight, it'll be a lot better when we redesign the, tra the trade academy a little bit um, because of what Easton said, a lot of people coming in, like we get messages all the time. They're like, I joined Tradera. There's just a couple PDFs in here. This is trash. I can get this on Wikipedia. And I was like, <laughs> my goodness. You know, like not the brightest star in the sky, you know? But the thing is, is like, and part of it is the way that we have designed it because people That's who true. don't know better, even people who may have been trading for a while, who may be coming from other companies, and there's a ton of companies, a ton of platforms out there, and I've been through them all. I've seen all their stuff, you know, and I'm not talking about MLM companies. I'm talking about just normal companies out there. There's a you know, a ton of them out there, all with incorrect information. And a lot of people who come in, and I, and I say this all the time, people who come in who don't have experience with other Forex or, or crypto or trading education in general platforms are going to have a lot easier time here than people who do, because people who do just don't even, they think they understand what's going on, but they don't, even down to simple terminology. You know, and it's it's one of the things that in hindsight, I think we should have organized a little bit better and will be organized better in the new back office to where people don't have to understand the different types of asset classes and what technical analysis means. You know, I get that people don't know what that means. I get that people don't know what fundamental analysis is. You know, we're going to be we're going to be making that even more user friendly and for people who are beginners and stuff like that. Yeah. OK, two two big questions that I saw a lot of them come up. One. Who is sending the alerts? And two, with all these new services, will the price point change? So, do you want to? I'll hit the alerts real quick. Okay. I'll hit the alerts. You can hit the other one. So, with the alerts, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna be real with you. We're not gonna release their names because what that does is that adds stress to them. And when if if you have traded, okay, if, if I got any real traders on here, which I hope you guys are, if you trade under mass amounts of stress you will start to lose and make decisions that you wouldn't normally make in the market and it plays with your trading psychology and it's not good. That's why we keep the trade team anonymous. It takes that added pressure off of their back. Cause if I say that if John Willie's like, yo, I'm John Willie, I'm placing a sale on the <laughs> end and it tanks or it, or it goes flying up when he said it would tank, he's going to get real stressed out. Every trade that he goes through at that point, he's going to have like flashbacks and he's going to be scared because now his name's tied to this trade and everyone's going to hate him. You know, it's just a lot of added stress that I don't want to put those guys through because I've been there. I've done it. You know, like it adds stress to me. I know it's going to add stress to them if they do it because I've done it before. Okay. It's not a fun time, but, uh, and it's a lot of responsibility for them. Hey everybody, Max is calling the signal. <laughs> So everyone grabs. <laughs> Cody, you gotta put me on your payroll and stop playing. I'll call signals all day long. You better stop it. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we keep it that way for, for a psychological standpoint of, of those guys. Because I already know that if if it's if it's if it gets really stressful for them, it's likely that they could crack, whereas right, right now. They, they, they're making the right decisions. You know, there's some losers. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say that there's no, yeah, but sometimes they lose, you know, but overall they've been amazing. Yeah, guys, we have every single trade alert that has ever been called by the trade team transparently fully shown in the back office because we can, because we whoop at, I mean, <laughs> we're, we're very good. The company is very good and what we teach works and the guys that are working with us and calling these trades for you, do a consistently phenomenal job. Yeah, now some of you guys might might say, well, how do I manage the trade? You know, like, when do I get out? Let, I, look, hey, there's a couple of TPs there. Legally, these guys cannot tell you how to manage your trade, okay? They can only tell you the parameters that they're looking at. From a legal standpoint, they cannot tell you how to manage it. Yeah. Okay, that is completely up to you, and there's a section in there for that. In the platform. Trade, called trade management. Okay. It's real, it's real hidden. <laughs> I swear I say that five times a day. <laughs> Go uh, and Please you know, go. <laughs> I think people want, want their hands held, and that's fine. You know, you're a beginner, I but I, I understand that, you know. But legally, it cannot be done. Okay. I'm just going to be honest with you. They're not going to tell you how to manage them. 
okay? Because that, from from a legal standpoint, that becomes a nightmare at that point. Yeah, and another thing too is like on the, on the more like personal note, when it comes to your trading, you know, like everyone kind of go back to what I was saying earlier. Like everyone's going to be in a little bit different place. You know, like if if someone has a much smaller account, they're not going to be swing trading unless yeah. they're just just really <laughs> just, just really doing it. For the- <laughs> But they should not be swing trading, you know, as an example, you know, and so when, when, when a trade is called, if it has a 200 pip TP is take profit three, some people will be going for that and some people will not. It's going to, a lot of it depends on the equity that someone has, Yeah. you know, like real trading advice is not to go out there and try and flip your account over and over. It's saying gymnastics, you know, mm-hmm. like it's to slow percentage gains on your account. You need to trade the right way. And that's how you make consistent profits. Yeah, and it might not sound sexy, but it is what it is. It is what you know, we're not sitting here flipping accounts over and over and over and over, okay? That's not realistic, all right? And if you do that, if you flip an account, you can just as fast flip it back down to zero, okay? Now you now you, now you over flip the account down to the bottom. Now I've watched him do that, and that's fun. That's a quick time. It's not <laughs> fun. You don't want to do it, you don't want to do it okay? <laughs> There's a risk management section in there that breaks all of this down. Please, for the love of God, go through it. Okay. Hey, everyone, real quick, that's asking about the new services and charging more money. Oh, yeah. Guys, we charge $99 a month. We're not here for the money. The, the price is not going up. Nah. It's staying the same. Everything that we do is just added benefit for y'all. It's just yeah. added bonus, added value, added, you know, we're trying to help you guys learn how to trade. You yeah, know, I wish you learned how to not- play just so you could drop it. <laughs> right <now. laughs> oh my goodness. I preach yeah. so much about the I, value I will, that this company provides. My God. I will, I will be honest with you guys. When the mobile app drops, we might charge for mobile app. Yeah. If you want it. Optional. The only reason that we would do that is because you don't need it. It's optional and we're paying a lot of money for it. So... That we might charge for. None, none of the services, none of the cost of the membership, none of that's going to be charged for. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, all that's just oh, added benefit, guys. We're we're going to sit here and we're going to stay at 99. Even if the even if the value of the dollar drops, baby, we're still at 99. Because <laughs> we should be making money when the value of the dollar drops. Check the X Y. Exactly. <laughs> I see you, David. You're in there learning. <laughs> Listen, he said David on these charts out here. Like, Whoa. All right, all right. <laughs> he told me the other day, he's like, dude, I got to get out of UJ. It's a little bit my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's hilarious. All right, guys. Um, listen, so uh, I, I just wanted to kind of uh, address a lot of the questions that I see. If you got here late, then you're going to need to go back and watch because we're not going to readdress what has already been addressed. Um, we've already addressed the timeline kind of for I, I pay out. Um, it, it's the number one thing that's going on there. New services, um, we're not going to sit there and, uh, you know, and going to um, leak it until they're ready because I, I, I know the field. And unfortunately, if they tell you what the new services are, you will start asking why you don't have access to them tomorrow. Um, because uh, <laughs> there is absolutely no patience in the MLM space. Um, then um, everything else, yes, Cody is pink shirt. Easton is the polo. Are uh, we keeping the holding tank? People are asking that in the new back office. What, what about what the new barrier? Are, are we going to keep the holding tank? Are we going to keep the holding tank in the new Yeah, that office? feature, yes. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see, I saw, I think someone said something also about the rank analysis chart. Like, yeah, we're going to keep that too. It's going to get redesigned and some stuff's going to get thrown around a little bit. We're going to add some things. But as far as taking things away, even, come on, guys, we don't take stuff away. You know, it's funny. Veronica's in here and she said, Easton's hair is back. Oh, Veronica. Veronica. Yeah. she was there for that. Guys, 
we did a we did a Facebook live one well, not a Facebook live we did we, we used to run the live sessions for Tradera. They were a lot of fun. Too. Yeah, they were a lot of fun. We used to be able to do that stuff without having to worry about getting sued and putting the company in jeopardy, right? <laughs> so we used to run those. <laughs> this was like last year. We told everyone we were like, hey, if we can get a hundred people on the live tonight, this is back when we had only like five hundred people or so in the group, you know. I will shave Easton's head live. And I'll be I'll be darned if a hundred people didn't get on that night. And I shaved his head live. That was awesome. Yeah. Those were the days. Okay. Guys, I'm going to deal with a couple other questions. And, and I wish that you would just think about your questions very, very <laughs> intently before you ask them. Um there is no way that we could show the back office, the holding tank volumes before people are placed because they do not know if they are going to be placed in the first leg, the second leg, or the third leg. You have an option of where you place them, and so they are not going to make that decision for you. Um, the, um, the other question, yeah, legs cannot be repositioned. All right, guys, I dealt with this on so many lives, and, and I'm going to deal with this here, and this is something that every single big leader here likes until it affects some. It affected me. Cody and Easton remembered when, when I, I, I was like, well, this doesn't make sense. I was like 40, 20, 40, why did, what, you know, why did I hit rank? And then they said, you know, well, you know, it's 40, 40, 20 in that way. And literally I said, okay, make it more clear. That's not a problem. I'll hit legend anyway. You cannot change your legs around. Number one, it's unethical. Number two, there are a lot of other companies that are not going to pay you out nearly as much or give you the value that will be more than willing to go ahead and move legs around for you and do super unethical things. And if you want to be a part of that kind of environment and that kind of culture, please go there because that's not how we're doing things over here. Um, and uh, rank analysis more detailed. Guys, I, I have no idea how we can make rank analysis more detailed. Um, new ranks. <laughs> they, they might be new, David. You know? um, rank analysis, it, it, it breaks down exactly what you have and what you need. It's real simple. If you've got what you need for that, you get a green thumbs up. If you don't, you get a mean thumbs down. Yeah, you know, it's, real, it's real simple. So I encourage everyone to know where, where their rank analysis stands, if that's what they're doing, if they're building a team, you know, check that out. Super helpful, super helpful. You know what? You know what would be really fantastic? If you're on this call right now and you are participating as an IBO, participating in our referral compensation program, looking to create an income with Tradera, would you please just go read our actual referral compensation program? So you just like, no. Do that yeah. Do that for us, guys. It's on our website. Go to www.tradera.org, okay? And you click on the referral compensation plan. If you scroll down and click view, there's a button. You click view. It takes you to the compensation plan guide. Yeah. And all everything <laughs> is ex explained in full detail. You know, and if you're, bu if you're building a team, go look at that. Encourage your downlines to go look at that. It's super yeah. important. I mean, all the information is there and readily available for you guys. And uh, it's just, it just seems like there's a lot of people that don't read it. And then there's also a lack of uh, communication from the upline and the sponsoree, I guess. Um, I think that's what you call it. I'm not an ML. Something, something like, like that. Something like that. Yeah, you guys have to understand, like, the comp plan's amazing. The company's amazing. You don't have to, you know, be shy about how things work, you know? The best thing you guys can do for your team you know, and, and even yourself is to just, you know, use the resources. Make sure if you bring someone on, you know, they want to be an IBO, say, hey, go check out the full guide. It just breaks it down in detail. Let me know if you have questions. Send your questions into corporate, you know, support at You know, like make sure people are informed. You know, make sure they know a little bitty, you know, details going on. You know, it's a great compliment. There's nothing to hide. You know, the best thing you can do is make sure that everyone's fully informed on how things work so that every everyone understands that this is a transparent company. You know, there's no need to, you know, hide things and, and being informed is the most important thing. Because when people aren't informed, that's when there's problems. You know, yeah. easy solution. Okay. Uh, other than that, guys, I mean, um, 
Dom, Max, uh, uh, anyone else, any pressing questions? The, the, the legs are the legs because that's the way that the comp plan is written, period, point blank. Um, <laughs> Yes. Did you, did you, um, yeah, I think you went over all of the lists. I appreciate uh, y'all for doing this so much. Oh my God. Yeah, 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 so much. Much. Dominique, this legend number two. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yeah, some people were, um, you know, just asking about of uh, the new ranks, are they real? Are there are there going to be new ranks? Um, and people really just want to see your faces. That's why, you know, I've been in this industry for a little bit, not long, but I know that people like to have their relationships. So I'm so glad that you guys came on. Everything you said, everything about this company is what it says. Like I have spent so much, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on uh, learning to trade. And when I came into this back office and I went through it, it was like, all of the missing pieces that I missed were together. And anybody, anybody who says that this training is not what it is, they have not went through all of that training in that back office. And I know that for a mm -hmm. million percent fact, period. Yeah. Okay. They gotta go through it. And real yeah. quick, guys, I, it's Radiance. I just have a quick question. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, um, I know you guys addressed the tape. What'd you say, Cody? One of our members been with us since day one. Yes, you know, <laughs> when we were shooting in the gym. But um, real quick, so the trade alerts, I know you addressed take profit one, two, and three, distinguish it, you know, how long you are holding them. But are you guys going to implement um, like the time frame that the trade mm -hmm. alerts are called on or no? Well, the time, well, that's the thing with the time frame. The time frame doesn't really matter if the trade alert is called. I know someone, uh, there's, I've heard people want like the entry price as well. And that kind of throws me off because the entry price is when the alert got sent. You know, mm -hmm. like that was it. If you come in an hour or two later, check the back office for it and see what it's posted at. Yeah, yeah, you know, but like when, when the trade alerts hit the telegram, like that's the entry point. You know, right. when, when the alert gets sent. You know what I mean? If you check an hour later, you know, you might have to do some more due diligence to see if it's still valid. The entry information like that's in the back office, so you might have to go check that, you know, and then look at the chart and pull it up and see what's going on. You know, and that's, that's another one of the things, too, when it comes to, and I'm sorry, I, I took the stage from you. Oh, all yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, it's what it is, it's the hairline. Yeah. But here's the, here's what's important, like, when it comes to the trade alerts, I think that a lot of people, especially the new people, and, and part of it, again, I'm putting my finger right to the leadership. You know, we have some phenomenal leadership here, but there's always ways to improve. You know, and, and when people are coming in with the expectation that they don't need to learn anything and they can just take the trade alerts and just make money without having to learn a thing, that's false. It's not what we're about. That is not true. It's just not. Like, you cannot do that. I understand that it's a good marketing tactic. I understand that with trade alerts, you need to know a lot less than you otherwise would. But the thing is, is that you still need to know some basics. You yeah. still need to understand risk management. You still need to understand account growth. You still need to understand how MT4 works. You still need to be able to pull up a chart and get an idea about what's going on. Yeah. You know, at the very right. end. And yeah, so I, I agree. Yeah, and so I think that it comes down to that. And I think that a lot of the questions, especially when um, someone says, like, what's the time frame for this trade alert? And a lot of times, and you're not the only, there's a lot of people that ask this. I think a lot of people ask that because there's other, they're coming from other places where that information is provided. But the problem is, is that the, it's a misleading information because our traders use multiple time frame analysis. And if you don't know what that is, go through the platform, you will get to it. There is a element that literally says multiple time frame analysis, breaks it all down. But basically what it means is they're not just sitting there staring at the four hour <laughs> all day. Just staring at the four hour, you know? They're using <laughs> analysis, top down analysis, looking at multiple time frames, putting things together to get a more accurate understanding of the market conditions. So for them to release a trade and say one hour, that's not doesn't mean that anything. doesn't mean anything. Yeah, what matters is, and this is the key, and I hope that people who are on here as clients are paying attention to this. What matters is where's the stop loss, where's the entry, where's the take profit? Because whether it's on the 15 minute, the one hour, the, the, the two hour, whatever it is, the 45, who, who cares, right? 
What matters is where are you compared to the entry price and do you accept the risk management associated with the trade and do you like the setup? And it doesn't matter what the time frame is. It's multiple time frame analysis. It comes down to it. It's a risk management thing. You know, yeah. and I think that it, what it comes down to is it's people aren't as informed as they need to be about how that stuff works. Yeah, and I don't think anyone should be blindly entering in any of the trades. You know, mm-hmm. I, we're not here to sit right. here and create zombies that just copy and paste, copy and paste. You know, like we're not here for that. We're trying to create real traders here. So be informed, go through the education, learn, okay? We don't want to sit here and have a bunch of people in the company. Like we want to create real traders, okay? We want people in the company, but we don't want a bunch of people that can't trade in the company, okay? We want to, we want to build you guys up into that, you know? So we don't want to sit here and just, you know, anybody can copy and paste, you know? And that's, that's that, that, delete, that defeats the purpose of everything that we've put together in the back end. You know, is it a great add-on? Yes. Do I completely love it? No. You know, I want you guys to take trading seriously and really learn something. You know, like this this skill set I said at the beginning, this skill set is the most powerful thing I've ever seen, ever. Mm-hmm. No one's taking this away from me. I'm sorry. Someone would have to EMP my entire state for me to suffer. Okay, and I don't think anyone can afford to do that. Yeah, on the fly. I there. Well, 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 if I don't know if it's work with EMPs. So, but you get what you get. What I'm saying. No matter right. what. I'm going to be okay. And I want everyone to get to that point. Yeah, because guys, you have to understand the more you understand about trading, how trading works, the more successful you're going to be, the more money you'll make, not just on your own, but also with the trading works. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Thank you for addressing that. I had so many members ask that. So, yes, I appreciate it. No Anything problem. for you, idiots. Oh, thank y'all. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, um, because we've been out here for about an hour and a half, I don't want to hold up Cody and Easton, especially because I know that the dev team is up right now. Um, And (laughs) so, um, so, real quick, as I see 888 for the number of participants, you know, everyone drop an 888 just to show you thank you, real quick, to um, to Cody and Easton for taking their time and coming here. Um, the replay will be posted inside of the Lit Trade House. I'll also make sure that I email the replay link to Cody and Easton in case uh, they want it. Um, you know, but um, thank you guys so much for your time. Um, long overdue, but you know, thank you and, and thank you for the platform. Yeah, no problem, guys. Thank you for setting it up, David, and for your great leadership. A lot of you guys, Max, Dominique, Radiance. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. We appreciate yes, it so much. Thank you. We really do. Hopping on, I'm really looking forward to meeting. Yeah. Hopefully soon with these, yeah, these restrictions. Soon. Like, hopefully live. soon, guys. Tradera has got. We're just doing nothing but going up. I'm really excited for where the company's heading. Awesome. Well, you guys have a great night. Thank you for all you do, and thank you for you know communicating with that dev team and getting those things sorted. All right, guys. All right, guys. Bye. Bye.